Social media is influencing every aspect of life, and that includes the church. In recent times, there have been war of words on social media involving the clergy and that has taken such conversation to another level and has also brought forth some very pertinent issues that people have been talking about. Or the part of some of the pastors, they've been vocalizing their views and perspectives on certain key issues, set, certain doctrines that the church has believed and taken serious over the years, issues of tithing, issues of miracles, issues of seeds, issues of uh, miracle water, miracle honey, keys from heaven, and all of these issues. What is the implications of this for the church today and the future? Bishop Austin Igbasan is a regular here and I'd always avail us his views about some of this issue. Bishop, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Yes. So what, what's the implication of all of this? Is this a new kind of revival going on on social media being transferred into the real world that you and I is living on? Mm, I want to say the, the, the invasion that is coming from the social media is also a sign of the end time. Don't forget that this technological advancement has its own major negative attack. Now, if you look at it, you see that uh, uh, so many things have been existing in those days that people borrow film to go and look at something, pornography and the rest. But you can see that the social media itself, the invasion it has given this younger generation, it is not like those days where people sneak to go and borrow or go and borrow video to watch before their parents come back home. Now children can look at their phone and begin to, even the pump, and they, 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 they pump those things just to corrupt the heart of the children. So the social media itself is, 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 a, is an end-time invader of Christian faith, okay. morality. And I can say to you that the evil of the social media is more than the good of the social media. Yeah, you see little children today, what their parents never knew in the phone, those children can assess it, and they knew negative things far more than the morality that is being given to them at home. The easy access to things that can corrupt the leaders of tomorrow mm -hmm. are all embedded in the social media. And if I have my, if I have my way, if I have my way, I, I prefer us to go with our life gradually than the evil, because the evil of the social media is much more than the good. Now, I can sit down on social media and say something that is wrong and rebrand the mind of people from morality because of what I believe. And I will impact my word with those negative things faster, quicker, and with eternal value mm. than when there is no social media. You can say something now, maybe on video camera, people will not be able to assess it all over the world. But when you say it on social media, there are people on earth that they will never be on the positive side of life. So when they see some to, some, someone to kindle them, mm. the fire begins to burn. Some of the people who are putting some of these things on social media, they back it up with the Bible, relevant scriptures to portray some of these points, like on Titan, like on uh, miracle water, miracle perfume, and uh, stuff like that. What do you make of this? Uh, you know, every denomination have their own, their own dog, doctrine and dogma. But most importantly, I think the Bible is our standard for everything we, can, we do. The, the issue of tithing, uh, I, I think one of those things, why it is having so much effect is that people have failed to know God personally. When people know God personally, you know, everything, every false doctrine, the Bible talks about the wave of false doctrine, how it is going to come, that even the very elect will be deceived. We were told of this, this is one of the signs of the end time, that even the very elect will be deceived. Titan, both in Catholic, Anglican, Protestant, and all those churches, the, these are things that are rooted in the scripture. If I love God and I believe the word of God, I say, bring all tithe into my head that that may be food in my house. Uh, uh, do, uh, uh, prove me here with this. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing that everyone will see it. If that is the scripture and I, give, I gave my life to Christ, I know Christ personally. 
no amount of sweet talk, oratory preaching, twisting of the scripture, of any sweet tongue personality can change me if I have an encounter with Christ myself. Now, because that encounter will make me to practice what he commands. And when I practice what he commands, and I see the blessings that follow, I see the breakthrough that follow, no one on earth can come over and tell me that it doesn't happen. Okay. Now, I, I, as, a, as a preacher for years, when, uh, uh, when uh, 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 late Rea Bonke came to Bini, I went to the program with my wife. That same day that so many people were stampeded, I was there with my wife. We prayed together. And we said, Lord, I've been praying before I met my wife. And I told the church that my, my first children will be twins. In that program, I went with that mindset. And I heard my wife, we prayed. And from that program, my wife became pregnant. Those twins today are graduates. So somebody will sit down in his house and tell me that miracle does not happen. Miracle uh, is not a, is a, a mirage. Or will tell me that miracle is faked. Or if somebody fake miracle, that the original of miracle does not exist. Now to everything that is fake, fake is always an afterthought. Mm. Because the original exists before the fake. Okay. Of course, you cannot, do, you cannot fake something if there is no original. Mm. If there is no original dollar, you can't fake dollar. If there is no original Naira, you can't fake Naira. Because you need the original to be placed side by side to copy it. So the, the original has been in existence, and we never cease to be in existence because there is an advent of a fake. I prayed for people. Yesterday was my birthday. A lot of people came around that share miracles that God has used me to do. Even as at yesterday in the lives of people, including terminal disease and all. My younger brother gave testimony yesterday of how they ran test on him and they couldn't find what, what happened. He said that he came, he prayed five minutes prayer. What the doctors and everybody were, were running up and I don't want to mention the, the teacher hospital where he was admitted. And he shared the testimony. Even he has never shared the testimony with me. It was yesterday on my birthday that uh, the, the people were talking about me. Okay. Now, that five minutes prayer, what I was admitted for five, five, five days and everybody, all kinds of tests was done. Mm -hmm. Now, you would not tell that my younger brother, miracle does not exist. Okay. When I didn't ask him to bring anything, I just met them at five junction where they were rushing him and i just stayed with them. he said he was asserting me to follow them up everybody came back and, and ran another test they asked him say what what medication did you take what okay. has happened okay. one of my uh, son was there yesterday that i met, i went to their church to minister and when i was rounding up god said there's a woman here that death is following you but because of this convention death is removed from you that woman is a staff nurse the husband is a medical doctor that owns a hospital two kidney packed up i never knew their story it was when I came this year for convention that they were sharing that that woman was waiting to die because they were not having money to... So, how, so how what can, I'm saying is that yeah. it is not, miracle is not about human being. Mm. No man is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. And the, God, the day miracle ceases to exist, then that means God does not exist. Now, as we conclude now, how can the church decipher, distill the truth from the lies? Note that there are miracles. Note that some of these teachings are enshrined in the Bible. But we know that in today's world, a lot of people are gullible. A lot of people are being deceived. A lot of people are being exploited. What I think the church can do is that, number one, the foundation. A lot of people are in churches today who are not born again, who never had experience, personal experience and encounter with God. If you remember the story of Apostle Paul, he, he has been a fanatical person fighting the church. But when he had a personal encounter, you remember when Ananiah was asked by God to go and lay hand on him and have his eye open. Ananiah said, God, if you know the man you are sending me to, you won't send me there. God said, you are not current. That man now is an apostle to the Gentile. He will now begin to, the same cause he fights against, he will now be fighting for. Now, what happened is that a transformation came by encounter. And that was why Apostle Paul was head bound on preaching the gospel everywhere. The first thing is that the church should take men who are in the church system who have not had the first uh, encounter. That is just like a child having jambo pursuing me to enter into university. So those who have entered the church without having a personal experience with God must be taught and taken through the first level 
of their uh, of the first level of their contact with God. When somebody have an, a personal encounter, do you know that without even the pastor, the church member can pray to God personally and they receive miracle? Does he make it that that man, who, that young man, that young woman who pray and say, God, please, I, I want to be pregnant this month, and she went to the altar to go and pray. My, my mother gave birth to me after having three daughters. And it's, she said they wanted to push out of the marriage. She went to a convention in Ileife, uh, the, uh, uh, today's Oshun State. Uh, she said they have finished the program. She went to the altar and knelt down and grabbed the, 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 the plank platform where the man of God stepped on and said, God, they want to push me out of my marriage. Give me a son. Make him a prophet. I will donate him to you. And the next convention, my mother gave birth to me. She didn't even believe when they told her that this is a son. Now what happened? A man of God did not lay hand on her head. She just got hold of the platform and prayed. Now, somebody will tell me, my bad, that was a miracle to my mother. And that was the end of Femi. After me, my mother had three other sons. That I came, I opened the door for male to come in. Now you will not tell that woman that miracle does not exist. When she didn't even have, she didn't meet any man of God, say, lay hand on me. I said, Lord, if you do it, I will bring this child back to the next convention. And then they don't do convention in one place. They will do it in this state and do it in another place, another time. So you will not tell somebody like that. A personal contact of my mom with God brought me into this world. Okay. So, so I, I think that the church, the church folks, should go back to the first step of having personal encounter with God. Don't okay. forget that some of these people who are talking on social media, they are trained by the devil to twist the church. The fight against the church is always from the church. Because the only place that devil has not conquered us at today is the church. Every other place has been conquered by the devil. The only place remaining for the devil to conquer is the church. So if you think that devil will be far away from the church, devil should be a fool if he's far away from the church. Because the only place that fight the devil today is the church. So you can't leave somebody fighting you and go and be fighting who is not fighting you. So today I think that all these people we are seeing, I don't want to mention the name of a young man who, who, who rose up in one country, was rubbishing great men of God. Today where is he? When the war started, where I came from. Because, you see, the way God fights is different from the way of man. That is why those who are adulterating the gospel, using the word of God, twisting it to their taste. The Bible said there will be men who have inching here. So inching here people today listen to the gospel of the devil from the social media. Because they have inching here. That is why they will, they will have a shift from their foundation because they are not rooted. The way... Breeze will come and remove cassava. It will be difficult to remove Iroko at that moment because it is well rooted and grounded. Those who are grounded and have personal experience, nothing you can tell the absolute truth that they will take because they have a personal encounter with God. So the first thing that the church should do is to take everybody in church back to that foundation. When you are rooted, anybody saying something, now you use your mo uh, money to, to buy data and listen to fools. At the end of the day, you become like them because you are investing into a ministry of foolishness. So when somebody has a personal encounter, there is nothing you can do to a man that is, you need to see some people, when they move from one faith to Christian faith, the way they took the faith they were in, that is the way they grab it. And you see that most of them are more serious than those who are born into that faith because of where they are coming from. Okay. They are fanatically rooted in where they are coming from. So any shift at all, they shift the same zeal into their new faith. So the church must return. That is the way. We don't need to answer a fool. We just have to return to our people and take them to the, uh, the foundation. So what, what do you say to church leaders on the party note? Church leaders. Church leader, which whatever we are doing, we should check the scripture for it. Like you talk about miracle perfume and not the rest of them. I'm not into that. But I say to, uh, uh, I say to those who are into that, there are ways that, that the church business angle can be handled. Church can print book, print all kind of thing, and put a little on it to, for the running cost of the church. I tell you, to run a church is more difficult to run than to run a state. Uh, any pastor can be a governor of any state because to run the church is more difficult and, and it's capital intensive. So there are ways, there are people that should be behind who can hold the hand of those who are running the cost of the church. If the church is doing anniversary, they print a, a vest and souvenir and they put little thing on top of it as a running cost, it is not a sin. But I, I, I don't believe in the, uh, selling of this, selling of that, selling of that. So, but I think those who are doing it, she also looked at the, uh, the side of where Jesus came into the temple, okay. and he said, my father's house, 
should not be the house, the den, because house is different from den. Mm. When you turn a house into den, den is where you see criminal. Den might not have window. Den might not have door. So a house has door, a has window, a has a bedroom, a has toilet, but den, you can even pull where you play gamble inside. So it should not be torn. He said, my father's house must not be become the den of thief because house is different from den. All right. So, and the scripture said, will a man rob God? He said, you have robbed me. A robber is different from thief. And that is why the issue of tithe, God measured it by himself. A robber is somebody that comes behind, he, he, he robs you, looking at you. A thief comes when you are not at home and buckle your house. But a robber stands with you with gun and says, bring your phone, bring your this. What it means is that when a child of God does not pay tithe, he's just telling God face to face, robbing God. Robber does not rob at your back. Okay. They rob you life and direct. Bishop Austin Nibas, thank you very much for the views that you've uh, expressed here on the program. Thank you so much.